Thank you for listening to our lessons from our daily Bible reading. The reading yesterday was Deuteronomy 17 through 20, and the lesson is, whoops, sorry about that. You know, I remember times working on a car with my dad or my brother or somebody else, maybe my sons or grandsons. And you look and you say, okay, here, I, you need to use this uh, three-quarter inch wrench. And they reach down there and it doesn't fit. You say, eh, oops, sorry about that. It's this one instead. You know, a lot of things in our life, we do something, we say something, but we find out, you know, we were just wrong, mistaken. Sometimes we overreach. Sometimes we use wrong judgment. And we say, oops, sorry about that. And we might add, after all, we all make mistakes, don't we? But the reality is, in our reading yesterday, we find that's not true. You see, God doesn't make mistakes. Moses had been giving commands throughout this book, in the book of Deuteronomy, been giving quite a few commands, and he had told them in uh, Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, verse 26 through 28, very plainly, you got a choice. You obey, you're blessed. You disobey, you're cursed. So it's essential that the truth is known, that there is something they can rely upon. You go over to our reading yesterday in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, and Moses is uh, speaking of, he's given many commands again, but in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, verse 15 through 18, he speaks of Christ, who is yet to come, and talks about the prophet who will come in his stead, like unto him. And we know that refers to Christ, because in Acts 3, Peter makes application of that to him. But then he goes on, and he says in verse 20, now, the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. In other words, it's pretty serious that you get it right if you're going to attribute it to God. And so then he, he asked a, a pressing question. In verse 21, he says, Now if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? I mean, if it's a do or die situation, a blessing or curse situation, which it is even today, we need to understand that. And so he says, if they say in my heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? He says, now if a, if a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that's the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. In other words, you claim to speak in the name of God, God doesn't make mistakes. There's no, oops, sorry about that. Whenever it is spoken as God's will, you're speaking things that pertain to, as 2 Peter 1 and verse 3 says, life and godliness. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Those things that are profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness, that we can be complete. Truly really furnished? I mean, you know, it's it's essential that we know the truth. Well, <clears throat> there was a time in which God spoke through prophecies and such, through men speaking, and there was the ability that they had to say, if it doesn't come to pass, that wasn't from God. Don't be afraid of that prophet. Don't give him regard. Don't fear him. Instead, reject him. You look and you find today we have the same thing. There are a lot of people who profess to speak for God. The pastors, the reverends, the fathers, the priests, all of these things. You know, people say, well, God said. How do we know? Well, there's no, oops, sorry about that. Made a mistake. You see, God's word is specific. We can know it, John 8 and verse 32. It is complete. Jude 3, it's been given, it's complete, there is no more. Galatians 1, 6 through 9, claim to have a new revelation. You got some serious eternal problems. But the fact is, we can be noble and search the scriptures whether those things are so. Acts 17 and verse 11. We can try the spirits, 1 John 4 and verse 1. We can prove all things, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21. And God has given us that standard. And so we know that if it is not in accord with God's truth. Remember, God doesn't make mistakes. If it's not in accord with his will, don't be afraid of that person. Don't follow them. Don't listen to them. Reject them.
Don't be afraid to rebuke them. That's not what God said. A lot of things said out there in the name of the Lord. We need to realize God has always given man the ability to know whether they're right or wrong. So choose. Choose to follow God. Choose to listen to God. Appreciate those who speak that truth, but reject those who don't. Because after all, in religion, there's no, oops, sorry about that. We all make mistakes. You see, God doesn't make mistakes, and he gives us the ability to do right. You have a good day, and we will if we follow his will. Thank you for listening. Thank you again for joining us in this Bible study. We remind you, if you'd like to follow along in our daily Bible reading, the link below in the description of this video will give you the PDF so you can read right along with us. If you have any other questions or if you'd like information on a Bible study, contact us with the information provided on the screen before you.